Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Austin from awfulmedia.com and this is the I lost count, but this is the introduction to C# -sharp in Unity 3D. Now, the last part we covered the for loop and worked with some arrays before that. So we have some pretty pretty good stuff going on here. But what I want to do this time is work with we're going to set up an enum which is short for an enumerator. It's E-N-U-M. And then we're going to work with a switch statement. And what a switch statement will do is it will take a value and then check it against other values and do something based on the value it gets. Now that may sound similar to like an if statement, and it, it is, but you'll see what you need it for as soon as you see how it works. So the first thing we want to do is we really want to set up the enum. Now an enum can be declared within a class or within a namespace. It cannot be declared inside of a function and it is its own data type really. It's a data type that we can uh, we can limit to specific things ourselves. So you have strings which are limited to text and then you have integers which are limited between 2.1 billion in the negatives to 2.1 billion in the positives or something like that right 2147 something 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 I don't know the exact number but it's it's limited between ranges but they have their reasons right and uh, but we can set up a data type that we can limit ourselves to specific things and what I mean by that is we'll go ahead we'll, we'll create one and you'll understand maybe we'll set up a public enum right and it's going to be you're going to define it with the term enum and then we're going to give it a name now ours is just going to be for fun for now until we actually get into making a game uh, but for now we'll just set up a weapon type Notice the capitalization. The first letter is uppercase. This is good practice if you are setting up a class or a different type. And then your names will be lowercase as our health is here. So you don't get them mixed up. And within these curly braces, we will put some constants that the weapon type will hold and that we can set the weapon type to equal. And then we'll create a variable that draws from the weapon type. And I'll show you that here in a second. So first we'll set up sword and then we'll add a comma. Now we want to separate each one by a comma, each different, uh, each different value. So sword, and I like to do mine uh, down like this in a vertical way. You can do them horizontal just out through here. Sword, we'll do a staff, a dagger, and a mace. Just go crazy here, it's just for fun. Notice the last one does not have a comma. So sword, staff, dagger, mace. Now this isn't a variable, this is a type itself, right? We can make a variable that holds this type, just like we have the type of int here for health. The int is the type, the health is the name. This is a type now. So we can say public weapon type, notice that right there. And then I'll give this the lowercase weapon type, which is the name of this variable, and that's the type. Remember, uppercase, lowercase. And uh, what we can do with this now is if I was to say, hmm, let me just show you what you can, what you see in the inspector first. That's a big good place to start. If we go to the player, which I correctly named this time, you'll see over here that we have weapon type with sword. And we have this drop down menu that gives us the options uh, or the constants that we put within our enum. Now, that's pretty cool. And you can select this. And th the reason I'm doing it with the uh, weapon type is because I use that in an inventory system that I was working on for a little RPG game that me and a few guys were working on that I want to show off here in the future sometime. It's pretty cool and has some complex systems that I think we could really benefit from talking about. And uh, I use a system kind of like this to set up the type of items. So I'd have one like it's a consumable, one that's a weapon, and then one that's uh, a quest item. And I would label them this way because I knew every item would be 
at least one of those things, right? And there would never be any other type that I would need. So I wouldn't need a string. I wouldn't need a text field. I need to select from some that are already defined. And that's what I did. And it's pretty cool. So now I can check to see what the weapon type is. So if I say if, now we're doing an if for now, we'll get to the switch here in a second and use this enum in that switch. But I'm say if weapon type is equal to with this operator, not the single equal sign, because remember this is the return for like a true or false kind of thing. So if weapon type is equal to, now notice I do weapon type, the type, not the name. So it has the uppercase. And then it gives me the options that are in here. So it knows what I want to do with it. I'm going to say, hey, if this is a mace, so if that variable is set to the weapon type of mace, then I want to do whatever's in here. And I want to print out, hey, I'm a mace. Now we'll go back to Unity and we'll set this to equal mace. Go to the console, click play. And hey, I'm a mace, sword, potion, and no, that's from our, uh, we'll just get rid of this four for now. But if we look at this and it'll say, hey, I'm a mace, but if it's not on mace, if it's on staff, it'll say nothing. So what if we want to check to see what it is and take that value and do something for each one. So say if it's if it's a staff, do this. If it's a sword, do this. If it's a mace, do this and all that, right? Well, you can do that with an if statement. You can say if this, do this, else if this, do this, else if this, do this. But each time it will run through, do the condition, it will check for the condition, compare it, and then do something. It, it'll either skip over that statement and go to the next else, or it will run the statements inside of that check. And that's not the best way to go about doing that if you have uh, a predefined constant like we have, right? So what we can do is if weapon type equals that. So we're going to delete this, add that curly bracket back in, and we're going to do a switch statement. Let's do this in the update so we can see it happening every frame. You can do it in the start and it will just do whatever it's supposed to do when the script is initialized. But for now, we're going to do this inside of the update. So we're going to type out switch. And then we're going to use the parentheses, which is where we will pass our value that we want to check against. And then we'll do the curly braces. And the value we want to check is the weapon type variable, not the type. I keep repeating that. I know I shouldn't. You get it by now. So we're going to be bringing in the weapon type. So this is going to check what that is equal to one time and then go through here and see if our cases match that value. And what I mean by that is now we're going to say case. So switch and in case kind of right. So in case the value is equal to whatever we put here, do this case. It's equal to this. Do that. Same thing, but a bit more efficient for what we're wanting to do. So case weapon type is equal to a dagger. Now we're going to use a colon at the end here. And then below this, we will type what we want it to do. If the weapon type variable is equal to the enum dagger. Okay. And I wanted to do, I just wanted to print that uh, print dagger. Now we can copy this and paste it right below that. But we forgot something right here. Now, if we do this and it does come in here and that happens to be true, we want it to, to get out of this. We don't want it to go anymore. It's done, right? So break out of that. We're going to be using something we've not used yet. And that's a break. If we can read the uh, summary here, the break statement terminates the closest and closing loop or switch statement in which it appears. So it does exactly that. When it gets to this, if this is true, it terminates this statement and just continues on its way. And that's what we want to do for both of these. Now we can do this without, and let's do this without the breaks and I'll show you what it says. It pretty much says the opposite of what it says it does. So that's good. So we'll just leave it at that for now. And if I go in here, you'll see, Hey, case two already occurs in, Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not the error we're looking for. Let's do a sword. Not the error we're looking for. 
uh, control cannot fall through from one case label to another. So it doesn't break out of this case to get to the next one or to get out of this. So we'll break out for it like that. Now we'll do another case. Weapon type is equal to staff. With the colon, it'll line it up for you and do print. So typing it and not pasting it. Okay, so that's all there is to that. I don't like the way it formats that. Is that correct format? Well, I don't like it. I didn't break out of this. So you may be asking, what if none of this is true? None of this becomes true. What does it actually do? Well, it if it's none of this is true and you leave it like it is right now, it will just continue on its way and not do anything. But you can set a default. It's something that it will, as a statement that it will run through if none of this is true and it will do whatever's in that. But if you don't set anything, it won't do anything. So we'll do a default just to show you. Uh, print. This will never be printed though because we have an enum that we set and all these are available here. So we can't really make that happen even if we tried. Is that still true? What did I do? Oh, no break here. Okay, it should go away. Cool. Click play. And they'll say, hey, I'm a staff. Then we can change this to sword. Say, hey, I'm a sword. Change it to mace and mace. You get the idea. Now, this enum is going to be very useful for us in the future when we create uh, some cooler classes and do some stuff with them. We'll do some stuff with some enums. We may even do some stuff with some switch statements. They are pretty handy. You know, we're getting really close to being finished with this introduction to C Sharp stuff. There's a few more things we need to do in C Sharp. We, we're going to work with some vectors, uh, at least a vector 2 and a vector 3, and modify stuff a bit more we've not really done much with the information that we've gained we've just uh, we've just done like the bare minimum to make it do something so maybe we'll do i don't know like we'll actually write up something that interacts in the game world like we can make an object move or something simple like that just to show you how it how it hooks up how you can manipulate uh, coordinates or uh, positions of objects and stuff different ways to go about doing that so we'll go over a couple of those and uh, then we'll get into probably some more advanced things maybe not really actual games at this moment but we'll get into some mm, real world more more real world kind of things none of the stuff that we've done would you do as they are because they're just uh, super random teaching things I mean, just, this this class makes absolutely no sense it's just a bunch of stuff so maybe we'll do something that makes a bit more sense and uh, some more advanced stuff that makes a bit more sense too because that's very important for you to understand how all of this stuff comes together to actually do something because at, at this moment you might be thinking this is all kind of pointless isn't it yeah it is at this moment <laughs> but in the future you will see that you know you know how to do so much already if you have followed this series you know how to do so many different things. You may not understand some of the stuff or some of the logic behind some of the stuff we're going to be doing, but you know you know the uh, the code for it. You know what the stuff means, and that's very important. If you guys like this series and you enjoy the Unity coverage, please let me know with a like or with a comment or share the video or do something with it. Because that, that, that motivates me so much when I see stuff like that. But I do need the likes. I need the comments. It, it makes me want to continue the series. It makes me uh, see that people actually want the series. If you don't want this stuff, then that sucks because I want to do it. So uh, let me know in the comments and leave me a like. And uh, follow me on Twitter. I, talk about, I don't really talk about anything. I just, at the moment, I just advertise myself and it's pretty lame really but follow me anyway all right my name's Austin. thank you for watching and i'll see you next time